Hello, hello. Welcome or welcome back. If we haven't met before, I'm Erica. I am so glad you're here because you certainly read the title of today's video. So you know we're talking about one of my favorite topics, which is hosting, hosting dinner parties, keeping them stress-free, and dare I say, epic. I am coming off of hosting one just last night, morning after vibes with a coffee. And it was lovely and I want to take you through everything I did to get ready and everything I do to keep the mood feeling light, refreshing, fun, festive, all that good stuff. Yeah, I do want to just get right into it, but before we do, what makes me qualified to talk about this? I've been cooking professionally for quite a number of years now after going to culinary school. I have been paid to cook for dinner parties before. Um, I also just love to host. I find it really fun and exciting and not stressful, and so I figured I would talk to you about the mindset that I go into hosting with. Hopefully that can be of help to you too. Before I get into to it don't forget to like and subscribe please it really helps me out i will conclude the begging portion of this video now let us get right into how i host an epic stress-free dinner party okay step one, and this is arguably the most important step, that is to have confidence. I know it is easier said than done, but let me give you a little pep talk now. Having confidence about your hosting ability is going to be the thing that makes your guests feel at ease with you, make the night feel light and airy and fun and festive, which is exactly what we want. And the way that I always talk myself into having said confidence is to remind myself that I am giving people the gift of hosting and feeding them. And and again, that's a gift. So your friends or family members or whoever you're hosting are really only gonna be grateful for that gift that you're giving them. So just try to keep that in the back of your mind as you perform all the rest of the tasks that we're going to get into today. So start with a foundation of confidence and let's just roll right into the nitty gritty. Step two is what I like to call the list making phase. This is where you make your list of attendees, figure out how many people you're going to be hosting, and then you're gonna reach out to your guests, invite them of course, ask them what their dietary restrictions or needs are and go from there. They will probably at this point ask you what they can bring and that is your prerogative. I usually just have my guests bring the drink of their choice because I am very interested in the food. If you want help with the food, this is where you would ask for help with the food. Having someone bring a dessert or an appetizer or a side that is totally acceptable, do that if that's what makes you feel at ease and have confidence, if it makes you feel more at ease to plan and execute the entire meal yourself as it does for me, do that. The next list and arguably the most fun list is the menu. So for menu planning, I like to go to cookbooks. You could use food blogs for this. You could scroll on Instagram. You could scroll through the back feed of the Fresh Erica YouTube channel. I usually just look for inspiration from other cooks that I love and respect. I pick a main dish that suits most if not all of the dietary needs of my guests and I plan the rest of the meal around that main dish. I like to plan a menu where I can execute the majority of the cooking before guests arrive so that I am not running around like a chicken with my head cut off once they do. And actually, when you think about what can and can't be made in advance, it looks a lot like what can and can't be meal prepped. So things like soups and stews, dark meats, those are all great for a dinner party because they are going to be delicious and arguably better if you make them in advance and serve them at the time that guests arrive. I will also drop a link below to a video where I talk extensively about what does and doesn't hold up in the fridge. When I do my menu planning, I also think about appetizers and desserts, which I like to keep store-bought. That's just a little tip from me to you. I like to focus my energy on the meal and then put a little bit less focus on the appetizer. So that might mean like chips and dip or a cheese plate. And then for dessert, I often go store-bought with like some nice cookies or I might have someone bring the dessert because that's just not my preferred area of focus. So we'll talk about the menu for this specific dinner party 
momentarily. But let's talk about some of the other lists that I like to make just to get myself really ready to execute a dinner party. I also like to write a list or an order of operations where I plan everything I can do in advance of people arriving and then everything that I do the hour leading up to people arriving. Your list for what can be done well in advance should be at least twice as long as what you're doing in the hour prior to guests arriving. We want to appear or actually be calm, cool, and collected when people arrive. So keeping things mainly happening well in advance of when people arrive is going to help you do that. All right, the final list is the grocery list. Self-explanatory, but write yourself a list of everything you need to get at the store to execute your menu and go get it. I like to do that ahead of time, which leads me right into step three for all of this dinner party planning, which is to get ahead. For me, that looks like grocery shopping ahead of time. It also looks like cleaning the house. If you need a deep clean, do it a day or two in advance. Just take as much off your plate for the day of as you possibly can. And that takes us right into the most fun part, which is step four, the cooking. I will tell you the menu that I executed in just two or three hours of cooking and a little bit of hands-on time once guests arrive, but very minimal. My first main was a simple stewed bean. I followed the Tamar Adler method, which I will link below, no relation, but I think she's very smart about food. And it just looks like soaking beans the night before, getting them into a pot with a lot of aromatics and beautiful flavors and stewing them for a few hours. These hold up beautifully for days. So executing these in advance made a lot of sense. The next main that I planned was a harissa chicken thigh. And that just looked like marinating the chicken thighs in yogurt and harissa. That is a store-bought condiment, making it a lot easier for myself. I dropped some loose recipes for anything that I cooked through below. And then I got those marinating and onto their baking sheet in advance of people arriving. I also made a cucumber salad with a a really fun toasted nut, feta, shallot, and parsley topping. The cucumber dressing, I actually used a pesto tahini yogurt sauce that I made in a previous video linked below. My second vegetable side was just a really simple salad of iceberg lettuce and a really zesty, tangy Italian dressing, lots and lots of black pepper and oregano to keep things feeling really, really flavorful. And then I made some really simple buttered rice. I used my rice cooker here so that it could be made well in advance, like hours in advance, and the rice cooker keeps things lovely and really fluffy. <laughs> if you don't have a rice cooker, you could still make rice in advance, just reheat it with a little splash of water. Water. I also did a honeyed labna that comes together with store-bought labna, honey, chili pepper, salt, so simple, but it was actually the hit of the night. The final thing that I served was store-bought pita. Could I have made this myself? Yes, but I was not interested in making it myself, so I didn't. Step five is just going to be to get everything ready for guests to arrive. So do that one hour before checklist, which might mean like a final clean on the kitchen. I always like to pull out the serving platters that I'm going to be using. And this may seem a little extra, but it really helps me to use a post-it to label what dish is going on, which serving platter. This also looks like getting the kitchen ready to execute any of the last minute cooking that you're going to be doing once guests arrive. So that might mean like lining a baking sheet with foil. It might also look like getting your, in my case, pita bread wrapped up in some foil as well so that it can go into the oven at the time of serving. Just think about future you when you're doing this one hour before prep. I always try to get changed before guests arrive in this one hour prior period and we've made it to the most fun part of the dinner party, which is setting the mood, welcoming people in. For me, setting the mood usually looks like just making sure the apartment looks good, setting a couple of candles out, setting the table and getting some music playing. I usually go for some like smooth jazz, bossa nova, that kind of vibe. But yeah, pick the vibe that works best for you, get the music playing before guests arrive and then welcome people in with open arms. Act excited to see them because you are, you just prepared this lovely meal for them. We're all so lucky to be together. This is the mentality that I try to have when I'm having people over. The final thing I'll say is just to make hosting work for you and your 
your space. So in this case, we had a sit down dinner party, but that's only because we had enough chairs for people. I have hosted so many meals where we literally gathered around the coffee table, on the couch, on the floor, on cushions, and just made it work. We ate off of our laps. Again, you are the person that sets the mood, the vibe, the tone. So if you want it to feel like relaxed and fun and casual and have people sitting on the floor while they eat off their laps, that's perfectly fine. Have confidence about that. You're feeding people, what a gift. Okay, I will leave you here. Thank you for coming along on this little dinner party journey with me. I hope this gives you confidence to host people in your home. If you have questions for me or you wanna see a follow-up video of any kind on this topic, please leave them below. I hope you have a lovely, well-fed, fun, festive week ahead.